Hello, I will briefly present to you some additional post-evaluation analysis based on voice similarity matrices. So voice similarity matrices can be used in order to visualize differences in performance across speakers, but also in order to assess the global diagnostication of a system and the global voice distinctiveness preservation. Voice similarity matrix are just a matrix where an element is a similarity between two speakers and a similarity is a sigmoid applied on an average score between every segment from a speaker and every segment from another speaker. We build three voice similarity matrices, MOO, within the original set of speech segments, MOP, between the original and synonymized sets, and MPP, within the synonymized sets. Here, I will use P for synonymized, A for anonymized, and I will use them in the same manner, even if it is two different notions. So here are three artificial examples. And for each case, we have MOO, MOP and MPP. To check the de-identification, we can watch how much the diagonal disappears from MOO to MOP. And to check the voice distinctiveness preservation, we can watch how much the diagonal dominance remains the same from MOO to MPP. So here, the best case is case C because we have both de-identification and voice distinctiveness preservation. So by comparing the dominance of the diagonals between the, the matrices, we can have an insight on the global performance of a system. So we, we compute two, metri two metrics, sorry, the identification. So we compute how much the diagonal disappear from MOO to MOP, such that DID equal to 100% is perfect identification. And for voice distinctiveness preservation, we compute a gain of dominance diagonal from MOO to MPP, such that Again, equal to zero means that the voice distinctiveness remains globally the same. Again, above zero means that there is a gain of voice distinctiveness. And again, below zero means that we have a loss of voice distinctiveness. So here are the results for the systems. We can see that some systems perform similarly to baseline one. So where we have a good identification as the diagonal disappear from MOO to MOP. But we have a poor voice distinctiveness preservation because diagonal tends to disappear also from MOO to MPP. Some systems perform similarly to baseline two, where we have, a, we have still voice distinctiveness in the protected space, as there is still a bit of diagonal in M, MPP. Sorry. However, there is a poor identification. System K2 seems to perform well uh, both on the identification and voice distinctiveness preservation. However, we can see that uh, on the protected set of speech segments, there are some sparse confusion between pseudo voices for some speakers. Here are the results for another set for VCTK test female. So we can see that it performs differently so there are differences of performance across sets, but also across speakers, because for instance, diagonal are not homogeneous across speakers. And also the background of the diagonal are not homogeneous. So some speakers can, uh, can be left uh, with poor uh, protection, even if the systems perform well globally. So here are the identification and gain of voice distinctiveness for libre speech and for VCTK. And we can see that uh, most systems performed either well on the identification or on voice distinctiveness preservation. But K2 here perform well on both. So to conclude, voice similarity matrices can be used in order to assess visually the de-identification and the voice distinctiveness preservation of a system. We have seen that there are some differences of performance across speakers. So our two metrics can be used to assess the global identification of a system and the global voice distinctiveness preservation of a system. And we have seen that most systems perform well either on the identification or on voice distinctiveness preservation, but hardly on both. Thank you very much for listening.